Welcome to One Thing Queer. My name is Jenny Baton, and my pronouns are she, they. And I'm Kelsey Wren, and my pronouns are she, her. Hi. Hey, what's up? What's up? We got a new episode. We got a new episode, and um, there's a special, uh, Jenny, this is a very special episode. This really is, and Jenny, there's someone in the room. There is someone in the room. There is. Who's sitting next to you? Who is sitting next to me? <laughs> so, um, from what, from the title, I'm sure you guys can see that. We have our very first guest today, and they're a very special guest, Lady of the Soul. Everyone applause in your car. (laughs) Jessie. Stop it. She she is an artist, abortion worker, and activist for the bisexual community. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. you. My name is Jessie. My pronouns are she, they. And thank you so much for having me. You guys are hyping me up too much. <laughs> no, truly. no, it can never be enough for sure. <laughs> when me and Kels first uh, started the podcast, I I told her I'm mm-hmm. like I already have a first guest in mind, Definitely. and it was you. Yeah. That like touches my soul like so much though, like truly. Yeah, I really sometimes just think like I'm just like spouting things, you know. Mm-hmm. But it means a lot. No, it does, and like. When I found out that you were also bisexual, and I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to talk to you about, like, do you feel this way also? Like, ugh, like, that's a, just... That's another reason I Yeah, that's... Oh <laughs> Jenny Je- looking out for me. I am here for y'all. <laughs> Let's do it. Love it. So Ooh. we do our little segment called Shoot the Shit. <laughs> that's my favorite part. One of the favorite parts. Really? Oh, oh, yeah. oh okay. I'm always like, shoot the shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to take credit for that. That was all Kels. Oh, sure. Sh- that was all <laughs> She shucks. So how is y'all's week? How was your week? How was your week? My week has been what's today? Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Today's pretty good. Yeah. Um it's my last week off of uh vacation ish. So I go back to work on Monday, which is pretty exciting. That I is- have spent this week what did I do? I got a tattoo on Friday. Oh, wow. What a nice way to yeah. spend the rest you know, I got of a little it. work done. Shout out to Alyssa King mm-hmm. in Arcadia. She's been working on my sleeve. Um, took my partner to get a tattoo on Monday. Nice. Thank you, Becky G, for doing that. These are like the coolest people too. So it's like, I can't just not mention them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've just been relaxing with my dogs and trying to organize my home for when I go back to work and everything's just more in its place i feel yeah love it so yeah i've been off work for like two months and i think i need to get back in my routine (laughs) yeah a little little cuckoo at home (laughs) yeah i i think we all kind of need that time no yeah Yeah, i definitely definitely am grateful that i took that time off i really thought i was gonna take two weeks off and just go back to work yeah but my partner was like no like rest yeah you Mm -hmm. have been working throughout the pandemic Mm -hmm. um I never got time off and I'm grateful for that. Like I'm not saying, Oh, I had to work, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has been exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's I'm also not used to not working. Yeah. You yeah. know, I have a routine. So I'm I'm excited. I'm mm-hmm. grateful. I healed my knee. Um, but I'm ready to go back. That's awesome. amazing. Yeah. How about you guys? What'd you, what did y'all do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, what we we went to the pumpkin patch we Sunday. Did. That was so much fun. That was so much fun, but it was a mission it together. Was, <laughs> it was a mission. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get into it, but it was a mission together. But it was fun. It was fun. It was yeah. fun. Good pictures. Got we good pictures. pictures. It was yeah. cool. We got to a little bonding time. Yeah. Um, that was sweet. Yeah, my partner and I met another one of your friends, Celeste. which was cool. Shout out Celeste. <sighs> that was really cool. Yeah. Um, it was just really fun. Yeah. And the rest of the week was good, so yeah. How was my week? How was your week? Busy, busy? Busy. Yeah, I, I take care of my dad, so I'm his caretaker and then i also have my own business obviously um so it's been busy um mine's been a little crazy and like i i totally feel comfortable talking about it just because i feel like it's october and it's like awareness month for Mm -hmm. um, breast cancer um i i don't know if i have it or anything but i went to the doctor because i found a lump on my breast actually um Mm -hmm. so yeah i just really want to encourage everyone to like yeah. 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 yeah so on that you should definitely the best time what i what i tell my patients is that the best time to do your breast exams is like seven days after your menstrual cycle ends. yeah um because throughout that other time you know you might have some like hormonal different you know changes mm-hmm. going on so mm-hmm. your breast might just get like lumpy anyways mm-hmm. yeah um but seven days after your menstrual cycle ends you everyone should be um even men 
um, anyone who has ch- a chest should be mm-hmm. palpitating your um, mm-hmm. that area like at least once a month. Definitely. Wow. Yeah, you're not necessarily looking for something, but if you're doing it monthly, that way you can identify when it something is like, yeah. different. Yeah. Are you yeah. okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you okay? Yeah. Well, it it hurts like if I put pressure on it. The reason I found out was because my cat. I was asleep, and my cat mm-hmm. like will start purring like in the morning to like wake us up, and he like stood on it and like he just automatically woke me up from the pain uh yeah because i was like why did it hurt so bad because i like ended up like punching him i like sucker punched him (laughs) on accident (laughs) if you don't mind me asking where is it it is like in my inner lower right here is it like a just a hard it's it yeah it's like a lump and it hurts like if there's pressure okay so yeah i went to the doctor and i have an ultrasound next week yeah 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 Yeah, i mean i could just be like a fatty tissue you know sometimes especially in that area um we sweat a lot Mm -hmm. so sometimes our hair follicles could get like stuff yeah Mm you know yeah it's okay no yeah yeah i'm i'm trying to stay positive yeah you were getting morbid the other night and i'm looking (laughs) at val like with tears welling up and so is val i'm like (laughs) nope of like we're gonna need you to not think like that yeah, please <laughs> i know i think it was like i don't know i don't know how to feel about it because it's never happened to yeah. me so it's like i'm trying to figure out a way to like process it mm-hmm. yeah. in a way like and it's my weird way of processing it is <laughs> yeah. like making jokes out of it yeah but, of course it's how you're coping but yeah and i would i would say the i don't know who said it but having to worry about something twice yeah. so just try to chill until you're able yeah. to yeah for yeah, sure of course i mean I'm, that's I'm, easy to say yeah, you know, <laughs> for sure. No, mm-hmm. but I'm staying positive. I mean, yeah. I have my ultrasound next week, so yeah. We'll yeah don't go happens. down the Google rabbit hole. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I chose not don't to. Don't do it. Yeah, no, don't <laughs> you already got your appointment. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'm. I'm good. Professional advice only. <laughs> yeah, only that. And I'm a very spiritual person, so like I'm very much about trying to stay positive mm-hmm. and like grounding myself. And, yeah. You know, keeping calm, but I really thought it was important for me to say it so that people no, definitely, exactly. definitely check themselves. Th- that's what this, I think this is so good about what y'all are doing with the podcast is what, no matter what topic it is, these are things that people should be talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So even that, yeah. you know, when some people might be like, what I'm supposed to be checking? Yeah. My, yeah. Even people who have testicles yes mm-hmm. you should be checking your yeah, testicles everything. once a month <laughs> yeah you know these are body parts that we kind of just like oh they're there yeah but mm-hmm. no you need to make sure that you're healthy <laughs> yeah. and that's like a big reason i really wanted i know me and kels really wanted you to be here is because you are very vocal about yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. about a lot of things and a lot and you do spread a lot of awareness <laughs> for important things so uh yeah, see i no. always just thought it was so vocal and then this year when i got diagnosed with adhd i was like damn have i just this whole time it's just, it's just been me oversharing it's not even, like yes it's just like mixed with passion yeah but it's just like i have no filter <laughs> it's, it's, i tell everyone, i respect that. i have a condition yeah. <laughs> i love i love that though no. like i'm very much that way and i think you are too vocal yeah I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I have to. I hate to say, it, but I have to be comfortable a little bit. Mm-hmm. You don't. You don't get to know what's inside unless I'm comfortable. Basically, I guess. See, I yeah. wish I had that. I'm getting better. I'm just. Mm-hmm. I just. It. It. It cuts out the hypo- hypercriticalness of what I'm saying if I just shut up. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but if I know that you know me, you know that like Where it I all. Can read from. your face. It, yes. It all. Or you just. Or Jenny just reads my face. I just read your face. <laughs> I. I you're like a, a I'm book. An op- my face is an open book, <laughs> for is. sure. That's I why it. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can never hide it. You'll yeah. know exactly what I'm feeling. But yeah. yeah. But on that topic mm-hmm. of yes. uh, like what you sp- spread awareness of, um, we really wanted to have you on so that you can really just tell your story yeah. and share with us anything you want to share about your coming out experience or just your sexuality. Or- After listening to... But the coming out episode, I was really trying to think of my coming out story. I think that's why I asked Jenny. I was like, did you know that I was bi? Because um, Jenny and I went to high school together. Yeah. Um, we kind of had, we had the same circle of friends. Mm-hmm. I don't think we talked a lot. Yeah. Um, I was telling them prior to starting the podcast, I always saw Jenny at school and just noticed her because of her cool ass style i was not cool no i thank you very much no jenny was totally cool totally cool like is totally cool the coolest owner i'm not gonna wait it's just amplified now and you could just tell when you're comforting yourself it just makes it more beautiful but in high school you know you're already kind of like where do i belong you know in Mm -hmm. high school you kind of feel 
odd no matter yeah. what mm-hmm. but jenny just gave no fucks she just had the coolest <laughs> no, she, her coolest style that's why she always stood out she, she was so quiet in the halls yeah i would see you walking oh around but i was like dang look, look at her. <laughs> yeah. i was like look at her cool outfit today oh my God. like total Karen no vibes like oh my god like her oh. hair it all went it was totally like it was totally different that's okay. why i was like Oh, I swear, I swear, that's why, that's why I always blushing. remember, like, knew who you were, because I was like, she, she's the one that dresses cool. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad you thought so. But yeah, no, I, you know, I am almost, I'm, my birthday's this month, so I have one more year in my 20s. I have been with my partner for almost eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like I have been bisexual and forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think try to remember the moment when I knew yeah. I was, but I think it was always there, especially, you know, I didn't really have any relationships with people until I was in high school. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up kind of very, the odd one. I was, you know, I moved around a lot and I was kind of the hairy kid, the the weird one, the, I didn't have braces yet. Mm-hmm. Um, once I got into high school, I was kind of like growing into myself more mm-hmm. and getting more um, confident and not letting people really walk all over me. Um, and I met my best friend, Tyler, when we were 12. Mm-hmm. So literally the like, first day of eighth grade, we met. Um, and yeah, so I think I just kind of always knew I was bisexual. But in high school, you can't really have that. It's more, there wasn't really bisexual girls that I knew. It was yeah. more like, oh, we can be girlfriends, but we can't um, We can't do this in public. We can't mm-hmm. hold hands in public. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of just get very confused. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so in high school, I kind of obviously just geared more towards having boyfriends, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I was, I had my first relationship with someone in high school with a, it was with a female um i wouldn't really know what they identify now i'm just going to refer to them as they mm-hmm. um but you know i i was able to kind of get more comfortable with that in high school i think when you're growing up you're kind of trying to find like you kind of know like oh what's my role right like i'm gonna be in high school people get relationships we're gonna get a boyfriend and um you kind of fall into like what you think you're supposed to follow in a tr- in a mm-hmm. growing up thing, you know. Definitely. So you're like, okay, like if I'm with a girl or someone that's the same sex as I am, it's kind of taken like I could do this, but it's not going to be taken as seriously, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I got that a lot. It was more just if I was going to be with a uh, someone of the same sex, it's kind of just not going to be taken seriously as a relationship, which kind of sucked um and i had i grew up as a jehovah's witness i uh, for a <laughs> long time i think once i got into like middle school i was kind of just like i can't do this anymore mm-hmm. um and i vocalized that to my mom who was a single mom um we all kind of felt the same way but i grew up with that kind of back there yeah um and a lot of my family are jehovah's witnesses so I couldn't really just come out and just be like, oh, this is how I feel. Yeah. Um, it didn't feel safe. It's, no, it's not it's that. And it's just not talked about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not... Mm-hmm. Sexuality isn't talked about. Mm-hmm. Not at all. You're just expected, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to like a boy. You're going to date a boy. Mm-hmm. And it's not in, yeah. in it, it's not a discussion. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So when you kind of don't fit into that mold, um, especially when it's something that's not talked about in your household it will throw people off, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, not that it's okay. That's why I think this is so good that we have these conversations because we need to avoid that, right? Like, we <laughs> want... Because yeah. I kind of think, like, I'm grateful now that I'm comfortable, but it took a while for me to, like, get here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had my... Let's go back. So I had my first relationship with the same sex when I was in high school. I'm not going to say their name. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really cared about this person. So I was probably about 16... I want to say they were 18 because I don't believe they were in high school mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. And I could, after having like boyfriends or whatever in high school and it was like weird relationships and just like little kid stuff, I was so comfortable when I had this relationship. Mm-hmm. I was like, dang, this is what it's, it's felt like natural. Yeah. Na- very natural. And 
what was great about it was like, oh, it's it's a girl, so I could have my friend over my house, you know? <laughs> my mom, my mom won't not, know. Yeah. My mom won't know. And this person yeah. was kind of um they could be kind of mass presenting, mm-hmm. I would say. Like androgynous. Yes, mm-hmm. very, yeah. right? So mm-hmm. I was kind of just like, I wasn't going to say anything to my mom. I was like, she knows, she knows kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wasn't sure how she would react, but I didn't tell them. I was just like, oh, so-and-so's coming over. So-and-so's coming over again. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make breakfast for so-and-so, <laughs> you know? And my mom kind of never questioned it. And it was, I want to say we dated for a couple months and it was super cool. Mm-hmm. Like, I was very, very happy and... I, w- I was living, I was living like my inner gay dream. I was like, this person plays guitar and, this is, <laughs> and is singing to me. Oh my God, you know, like, and I started feeling more comfortable with myself at that point because I think I started not like mimicking their style, but I started getting more comfortable dressing maybe less femme and mm-hmm. wearing um, kind of similar to how they would dress, I think. Because yeah. mm-hmm. um, I was just more comfortable around them. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I, in this story, like, I, so I was, I never came out. I was outed. Um, At that time, I have a brother. (laughs) I have a brother still, but at that time, my brother wasn't living at home with us. And I've always had a rough relationship with my brother. Um, My, our father passed away when we were little. So I was probably 10 when my dad passed away. So I... Not making excuses for anything, because I feel like everyone has the potential to be mature Mm -hmm. and a good person. Mm -hmm. But these are just things that happened to us growing up, so whatever. My brother found out that I was dating a a woman, and he was always threatening me, no matter who I dated. It could be a guy, it it didn't matter, it's just, you're a slut, Mm -hmm. don't be dating. You know, it was very shamey. Mm -hmm. Um, It was not a healthy relationship. I got told those things all the time <laughs> growing up. Um, and so I got a call one day from my gr- that partner, my girlfriend at the time, to say, hey, I saw your brother at the mall. He confronted me and was like, I don't remember exactly what he told them. Just pretty much like, I'm going to tell on mm-hmm. you. And yeah. at that time, I know the person that I was dating, like, they hadn't come out to their family. Mm-hmm. Um, I think their family was kind of more on the religious side as well. And we were. She warned me, like, "Hey, like, he knows he's gonna tell your mom. He's starting to tell my mom if we don't break up." Um, that's what it was. It was an ultimatum. Like, if you don't break up, then I'm gonna tell your family, kind of mm-hmm. thing. So I was like, f- I was like, "Fuck!" <laughs> like, I was like, "Dude, like, I." It made no sense to me because it had no effect on anyone else. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. what? Do, what do you care mm-hmm. that? What? What do you care? Yeah. You know, like, fuck off. <laughs> but no, sure enough, um, he told my mom. Um, my, I would just want to say before, and like, my mom has come a long way, right? Like, this was a long time ago, but no, it's not okay how, um, she reacted, but it's a learning process. Yeah. Um, she did come home and she was, <laughs> she was upset. She was very upset. She confronted me and I denied it. I denied it a hundred percent. Like, no, it's not true. It's not true. Mostly because I think I didn't want my partner to get at that time to get in trouble. Yeah. Um, I feel like maybe she was more like, hey, like, fuck it. Let's just come out together kind of thing. Maybe I would have. Mm -hmm. But out of protection, because, you know, she was living at home with her family, financial support. I was 16. Um, I was being threatened to actually get sent away to live at my aunt's house in Arizona, who's a Jehovah's Witness. So all these things were, like, coming at me. Mm -hmm. So I just denied it. Yeah. And it sucked because she knew on some level I was lying. Right, because mm-hmm. they weren't allowed to come over anymore. Those visits mm-hmm. were gone, um, and it we just saw each other here and there throughout the years, and it's just like hi, hi, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that was that, and after that, I just was like, well, now I know I can't do this. You know, I can't mm-hmm. be myself, mm-hmm. or if I am going to be with someone of the same sex, I can't take it past anything sexual it's just gonna be that and i can't live a life relationship wise with someone and i kind of felt like that for a while and it was really you know i was 16 and like i said my mom has come a long way now yeah um but it sucks because it's like you don't i wasn't able to come out the way i wanted to Mm -hmm. and 
at your own time at my own time and Mm -hmm. then it's like when you are told like no you're not Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. you know like if you would have just come home and been like what's going on Mm -hmm. you know are you happy does Mm -hmm. this person treat you well yeah you know like those things were not asked so it's like what are your what are your standards in a relationship then you know what are you what do you want for your child? Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, want, I would want my child to be loved unconditionally. I would mm-hmm. want them to be comfortable with someone. Mm-hmm. Those are the values that I hold, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, that was then. So, fast forward <laughs> to, like, <laughs> me being 19, 20. My, mo- my mom started thinking that, like, I had a, th- like, thing with my best friend. Like, because <laughs> like, Tyler and I are so comfortable with each other. We're just very, yeah. like we would cuddle we and it was never anything like that and she started being like are you and tyler I'm like no <laughs> no you know like she's my best friend but I, she did sit down with me well i think when i was like 19 she said you know if you ever you know if you feel like you are like you like women or whatever you can tell me you know and then and in my head i was like kind of upset then mm-hmm. i was like what the fuck you mean you yeah know? like yeah. now you're okay now with you're, it yeah. now you're cool with this yeah um so we never really talked about it much um after that it was just nothing to talk about like like i said like you already grow up but not having these discussions yeah um but yeah you know you just kind of grow up and figure like well i can't do this and i'm only going to focus on yeah dudes <laughs> <laughs> not even like that you know i think once yeah. i got older you know i had different relationships um with hetero men mm. um, <laughs> and you know you learn and i think you learn you definitely learn from the bad relationships mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, when not to do how, and it's not even that, just more like me too, like how, what I expect from a partner. Right? Absolutely. Because yeah. like when my partner now is more like when we first got together, I was like, hey, <laughs> yeah. this is who I am. Yeah, let's make this clear. <laughs> I, I'm bisexual. <laughs> I smoke weed. <laughs> I like these things. What's up? Like, yeah. if you don't like it, like I'm not putting up with this no more, yeah. you know? Absolutely. Um, no, but no, now it's like, I'm grateful because I don't want any of this to sound like, oh, no, she's, like, regretting it. No, like, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I'm grateful that I have a partner right now who 100% loves, it, you. loves me and encourages me to be myself as mm-hmm. much as possible. Like, I still catch myself not asking permission, but kind of like, oh, is, is this okay that I, you know, like... Yeah. Like, the validation. The validation, mm-hmm. yeah. And they're just like, Jesse, come on. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah, like, you, I'm not, you gotta, yeah, like, oh my god, I didn't shave my mustache all week, you know? <laughs> like, shit. You know, like, it's so, so, and he's like, just let it grow. You know what? Fuck it. You know, like, That's who cares? Awesome. Love it. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> you know? Because it's like, mm-hmm. you grow up with, like, these ideas of what you're mm-hmm. supposed to be. And especially, like, I think being a woman with a man, mm-hmm. you're kind of like, yeah. how am I supposed to be? Yeah. Especially when you're, when you identify as bisexual. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that. There's, it's a balance. It feels like a balancing act sometimes. It really does. And it's, am I... Mm, Go. You, you, <laughs> Say it. Am I enough? I, yeah. I felt, am I enough in all senses? Am I enough queer? Am I enough bisexual? Am I enough of a hetero partner for him? Am I, you know, even yeah. though like... How you said it in one of your episodes, <laughs> sorry, when you were like... <laughs> when you were all going out and how you dressed, Mm -hmm. right? Am I presentable enough? Because we get into this role, like, I need to be presentable for my partner, right? Like, Mm -hmm. I need to be something that they're... It's like, you know what? Like, fuck that. Like, if if they love you how you are... They're going to be proud of that. It, right? it took me a long time to yeah. get over that, oh, it too. Takes a like, long time. Even, it takes a long time. Even, like, <laughs> yes, real quick, yesterday we went out and, like, I didn't wear makeup. And I'm like, no makeup? And he's like, whatever you want to do. No. And I'm like, I'm not, it's not about asking for permission. It's like a, it's a valid, it's yes. a validating thing. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, no makeup, whatever you want. And I'm like, cool. Like, I'm so excited because I don't want to put any on today. And, like, it's just the thing also is, I've always had that thing where we, like, why do I have to put on makeup to go outside? Like, Bo- males don't have to this yeah. is my face i yeah. can't just have my face out and like it's it's so interesting yeah and it's like we don't because it's it's what we're taught yeah you know? that's and what we're taught i don't like that's i always like i don't owe you presentability quote unquote exactly. to exist i can exist without you liking me at all <laughs> like yeah or liking any part of me but yeah exactly. no that's but that's important and i think that ha- not that i don't ever want to seem like we need a partner to be yourself that's mm-hmm. i don't feel that at all mm-hmm. if anything there's times where i tell my partner oh, i missed you so much like 
Jesse. <laughs> you know, come on. Yeah. We're with each other all the time. <laughs> Don't do that. You yeah. know, he's very, mm-hmm. that's what I'm grateful for. They, they check me yeah, a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. while letting me be myself. There's mm-hmm. a, he, they do a very good balancing with that. Yeah. Because um, they know how I am mm-hmm. and anyone who's tolerated me. Stop, <laughs> you know, like props, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I love you. <laughs> On that note, too, like, no, like, uh, you say tolerating, and it's like, we have to get that out of our heads, yeah. too. Yeah. Like, it's, it's tolerate. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's I'm, tr- I'm me, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I am what I am. Like, I, I know, same thing. My partner, we've been together a long time. And even now, I'll do the validating thing. Am I crazy? Do I sound crazy? And through therapy, I learned, like, that's just me trying to, like, uh, validate myself and I can easily just be like no I said what I said and I'm right that's it, mm-hmm. yeah. like and that's all it has to be just questioning and you yes. accept it mm-hmm. yeah. it's definitely <laughs> it's so interesting that you guys have this pers- pers- perspective of um, like when I come coming or going back to like the whole makeup thing mm-hmm. um I find it interesting, and I and I understand it because I mean I was with men my whole life, mm-hmm. and that's how, how I would always feel. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it really just depends on the partner. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. like who yeah. your partner is and who, how they identify and mm-hmm. who they are. Um, but I have found myself a lot more comfortable not wearing makeup mm-hmm. when like since being with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Like I feel more beautiful <laughs> without makeup on it's when beautiful. I'm with her. Mm-hmm. And it's also because when I look at her, I think she's the most beautiful without makeup on, which Y'all I are the, I, like the most beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Real quick. pictures. <laughs> Sorry, me and my partner were both like jaw open like at at the photos like they're gorgeous models. like models <laughs> so photogenic like there's not a bad picture of no you two. That, the style oh my god yeah killed it they get double the clothes <laughs> we do it was just that's honestly the best part like we share pretty much everything <sighs> mm. um Ever. but yeah i just find that interesting and she seems tall too yeah, she, mm-hmm. we're only like a, a inch and a half yeah. like <laughs> difference. Uh, Every photo was gorgeous. I was like, they're yeah. so photogenic. Like, oh. But yeah, I, I hate I hate when people like, especially because I used to hate when I was with men and they mm-hmm. would be like, you're more beautiful, like you're prettier without makeup on. And I cringed mm-hmm. when they would tell me that because I'm like, I'm a fucking makeup artist. Yeah. Like, get the fuck over it. I'm gonna wear makeup. Like, yeah, I had a you boy- don't know what's what, bro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I cringe every time I tell her that. I'm like, I'm so sorry that I'm saying this, mm-hmm. like, that I think you're the most beautiful with no makeup on. Because, <laughs> but I don't mean it that way. I'm like, if you want to put, I think you look beautiful with makeup it's on. It's a purely admiration, like, yeah. standpoint. Though. Yeah. It's just like, it ugh. is. It was just more, for for me, it was more like, I just don't feel like doing this. And the, yeah. I like, I don't, like, from sometimes makeup, I'm like, I don't even want to go anymore because mm-hmm. now I have to put, I have to put makeup on, quote, unquote. Yeah. I don't have to do anything. Nope. Like, I can't, you're going out with your face. Why can't I just go out with my face? Mm-hmm. This is my face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what I was born with. You get what you like, get. That's yeah, what, that's been my motto. You know mm-hmm. what? You get what you get. <laughs> you get what you get. I love yeah. that. That's yeah. what I. There's sometimes like today, like I didn't put makeup on. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, you know what? Whatever. Mm-hmm. I put lotion on my face. I was like, that's good enough today. That's, that's, let that's my face breathe. All you need. You know. All you need for sure. That's yeah. All you need. Yeah. That's <laughs> like me and Kels, for the most part, like both of us, like Usually like today I tried a little bit, mm-hmm. but it really like I just assess it every morning. I'm mm-hmm. like, do I feel like putting makeup on today? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I feel like putting yeah. on makeup today like how are you feeling yeah. today right? yeah, it, yeah i literally if, assess it every day and same. also with how i dress because since coming out as non-binary like i some days like i just i don't want to look any like ounce feminine mm-hmm. and some days i'm like yeah i do mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. It, yeah. it really just depends on my mental state yeah really. mine's purely a, an effort level that i want to give that day <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, do I want to? Do I want to do this? Do I want to put together? Because for me, your style is always great. So I'm like, <laughs> I love your style. I, but I'm like, it's effort. Like when it looks good, that's because I put a lot of effort into it. <laughs> like, do I want to? I'm like, can I just wear like, like joggers and like a t-shirt like that can't oh just God. be a, like that's your comfort that's, zone that's so my comfort this that's, is my comfort yeah zone. Like, no, i love it sweatshirt. anyways <laughs> no you're fine no. coming back Go. uh to i really would love to talk about if you you feel yeah, comfortable whatever. about your relationship and yeah. being bisexual in a hetero relationship yes. because i know kels has a lot um like she had a lot of emotion when it com- came to this and i remember when we first started talking about it like mm. she's like i have this like imposter syndrome no. and like touch base on that no so i think there's definitely okay so re- like, a couple years ago i 
decided, let me just really tell my mom. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm with my partner now. I at this point I had been living with him for maybe two years in uh, Koreatown, and at I remember this night because I was like working at um, at this point I was working at like a treatment facility for youth. Mm-hmm. It was like late at night. I was like, I'm just gonna tell my mom straight out. I'm bye. You know, just see you know, what happens. Mm-hmm. And actually, I did. I t- I texted my mom that night, and I was like, Hey, mom, just thought you should know, like I'm bisexual, and I just thought you should know that. Mm-hmm. Um. And there, she was like, okay, like, well, what does that mean, though? You know, like, <laughs> you've been with your partner, like, mm-hmm. does this mean, and it goes immediately to, like, the, 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 the poly talk. Yeah. Like, are you, <laughs> yeah, which is the same fine. Thing. Like, I have, I have friends, a lot of friends, actually, who are poly, yeah. you know, and props, mm-hmm. props, props. I am currently reading, like, books right now, I'm reading mm-hmm. The Ethical Slut, if you are interested in the, not, even if you're, even if you're not poly and you just, like, want to educate yourself. Yes, mm-hmm. Ethical Slut. Um. But yeah, and my mom was like, does this mean that you're having other partners while being with them? Um, you know, like, what is even that question? I felt like it's a little like, it's none of your business, yeah. <laughs> you know? But I was like, no, like, we're together. Um, I love my partner. Mm-hmm. I just have mm-hmm. feelings and have had feelings for both mm-hmm. men and women. I have been with both men. And it doesn't just, you know, hold it to men and women because I find myself attracted to like a lot of different mm-hmm. genders. people. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of people, uh, a lot of genders. You know, I have found myself attracted to um, trans men, you mm-hmm. know, like, in the, I think there's, that is what people are just like, oh, well, you're not bi. It's like, no, like, I am, I am attracted to a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and I had to tell mom, I'm like, no, mom, like, I, you know, this is what it is. Um, and her response was like, well, it was so cute. Well, I think Sharon Stone is attracted. Does this mean that I'm bi? And I was like, well, you know, ma- no. <laughs> you can still think people are attractive. Mm-hmm. You know, you could admire someone's beauty yeah. and not want to have sex with them. But, mm-hmm. like, but that was, like, the end of the conversation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But, um, no, I definitely has been as, as transparent as I want to be, right? Yeah. So... I think it was a struggle maybe a couple years. Not even a struggle. I am I love my partner. But sometimes I feel, I think also when I've been listening to, um, there's a sex therapist called, her name's Esther Perel. Um, I think a part of the, a lot of the roles that we fall into growing up aside from like gender roles is the traditional like relationship roles. Like Definitely. I think we might put a lot on one person mm-hmm. to be our everything right mm-hmm. absolutely um and it can be a lot like you're you're my best friend you're my lover you're my you're my everything mm-hmm. that can be a lot and i you know if i'm saying this about one person i had to identify that for myself mm-hmm. i can't realistically look at myself and be like i am everything for my partner mm-hmm. i'm probably not you know yeah. i accept my f- mm-hmm. my ways and not maybe just things that i just don't hold as a person that maybe you know, it doesn't take anything from our relationship because I feel like even for me to come to this point to feel that way, mm-hmm. I couldn't do that without the strength that I feel with my partner. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, but I think a couple years ago, I I feel guilty holding things inside. So I was just straight out like, hey, I sometimes like miss like making out with girls or like being it's just different and mm-hmm. i just felt it wasn't even saying it to act on anything mm-hmm. it's just like i had a feeling and i felt like oh my god if i keep this inside yeah it's like not healthy mm-hmm. and i'm lying it, you know i have the same you know? like if i was gonna say it feels like you're lying yeah. right mm-hmm. and this was like years ago and at that time i was like more upset like, mm-hmm. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, I think it was more like they felt it was an assault on them. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I can never bring this up again, you mm-hmm. know? Because um, it's not, it's like, because where does that conversation go? Yeah. You know, it's like, am I, what, I don't even know what I'm asking for. I'm just saying mm-hmm. this is how I feel. Because mm-hmm. um, do I want to be with anyone else? I don't have, I feel the emotional capacity <laughs> to be with anyone else, like uh, yeah. additional. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely there. And I feel like we just try to, I don't try to erase that from my identity at all. Yeah. I try to, you know, teen, I want them, my partner, to know they are my priority, mm-hmm. but this is still who I am. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, yep. like if anything, like we're comfortable now, like, oh, this chick, look at that. You know, like not in an objectifying <laughs> way. Yeah. You know, there's some models that like we like, hey, you know, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. look at this one, you know? Yeah. I mean, I do that. Yeah. 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 So Same. Like, but it's like, I, I always initiate that because <laughs> he's more careful, I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I try to get him because he's very private. He's very private, respectfully. Um, and I'm very out there with my <laughs> beliefs. 
you know, and my feeling towards things. And I understand that it's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, but the fact that he lets, not lets me, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to ever sound like I am being allowed. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have that freedom to just express myself Mm -hmm. while being with them. Mm -hmm. Um, there's been times that he's told me, you know, I wish I met you in college and we didn't have, and I was like, no, we had to have like those Mm -hmm. experiences Mm -hmm. with, you know, those relationships that were good and bad to learn how to be with each other. Absolutely. Um, so like, great, (laughs) but we also would not have learned everything Mm -hmm. that we would have learned to be able to be healthy for each other. And we're still learning, Mm -hmm. you know, like we've been together almost eight years and it's still a process. Like it's, you're still people i've had family talk shit because we're not married right <laughs> like it, like it's so stupid. i'm laughing because so, i we so, get we get this not and not so much anymore i don't mean to interrupt you but no not please. so much anymore but like i think it's so stupid it's, it's, it's like we've so been together funny. for fucking like how long and it's, it's less validating for you because we're not yeah what <laughs> yeah i we've been together well uh, like it'll be 15 years 15 16 years, years yeah. this oh, year i'm like you're I together mean, you're not going nowhere i mean I, if that doesn't say anything then if anything um, i feel like it says more because yeah. you're choosing each other every single day that's how i feel as well i'm you like know, you're not obliged by yeah, a no. piece of paper and like i still can't wait to see him every day he comes home yeah i like, can't wait no, yeah. yeah. Every day. Best friend. Yeah. Best yeah. friend, for sure. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're so yeah. fucking cute. <laughs> I love it. No, because that's, that's the thing. People, like, you know, I have had, like, a, I had sisters, a certain siblings, like, straight up just invalidate my relationship. Like, you guys aren't even married, you know? It's like, what the fuck? We have a, we live together. We encourage each other. We, you know, push each other for our educational goals. And I don't, and I don't need to explain myself, mm-hmm. you know, I'm at the point, yeah. I feel, especially this year, I've been setting a lot of boundaries mm-hmm. and trying to make sure that my space is very safe for mm-hmm. me, yeah. right? Um, I think growing up with constantly being invalidated, whether it's about my gender or sexual or, you know, how I feel about people, you get to a point where like, man, I'm a fucking adult. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't, I don't have to deal with mm-hmm. these people. I don't have to deal with this toxicity and this Mm -hmm. i don't if i don't if i feel like some language is violent um you're not gonna i'm not gonna tolerate it and Mm -hmm. you know i i got to the point last year um i don't know if this is totally going off topic because i know we're talking about relationships no (laughs) but no like i got you know last year when the black lives matter um protests and everything was going on that was like when it really started like setting my boundaries because it's like it's not even about having political differences. It's yeah. just like, you know, if you're not a good person, mm-hmm. you we have all the tools now at our hands if you hold any prejudice towards other people mm-hmm. to educate yourself, mm-hmm. yep. right? And if you, if it's just me and you value your relationship with me and you know how I feel about these things mm-hmm. and I've told you, you know what, this bothers me. Mm-hmm. I don't like it when you make transphobic comments. I don't like it when you make these comments and you're still going to do it, then mm-hmm. you don't respect me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it doesn't come from a good it's place it's and it comes hateful. from a like, hateful you, place yeah it comes from a place and it's it's a place of unwillingness to learn anything yeah. Yeah. like okay we didn't i didn't grow up knowing anything yeah. about the trans community mm-hmm. right like i grew up as a jehovah's witness i was nine years old knocking on doors trying to preach to people about the end of the world mm-hmm. no idea about the transgender community but mm-hmm. guess what i learned mm-hmm. i yeah. learned because yeah. they're fucking people and yeah. <laughs> you know they are being the most i feel at risk at not Mm -hmm. living a full life and their life expectancy is it's heartbreaking Mm -hmm. and in order for us to break these cycles we need to have these conversations Mm -hmm. and you know whether it's us Mm -hmm. having if i don't know if y'all want kids later on Mm -hmm. but these are the conversations to have Mm -hmm. absolutely prior to that that's why like I'm not in a hurry to get married because I know he's my partner. Mm-hmm. I'm not even with the kids. You know, I'm so grateful that our parents don't talk to us about mm-hmm. like you mm-hmm. need to have. When are you having a kid, Jesse? You know, I'm, it's never been like that, mm-hmm. and I'm so grateful because not a lot of families with my work that I do, I encounter a lot of patients who are young, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe 17 to 22, who their parents are like, oh no, they want me to be pregnant. Like they, wow. they're like, oh, and they're happy, but which to each their own. Yeah. But I feel like we, I've, the little that I've grown, the much have grown in the past three years is great mm-hmm. and is going to prepare me if and when I decide to have a family mm-hmm. to ensure 
that they are in a loving and inclusive household. Absolutely. Definitely. So they don't have to, it's not going to be you, what coming out. There's no coming out. Yeah. You're going to be whoever <laughs> yeah. you want to be. I, and I, like, you know? also like, not only will you not need to come out, I will already know because no, yeah. we'll already be that close. Yeah. Like, you know. And it's not going to be like, oh, you're going to, you know, no, whatever you want, however you want to express yourself. That's why, you know, I was talking to, um, y'all early and when you <laughs> I've, I've been tra- trying really hard to move away from um, gender um normative yeah mm-hmm. just even with i'm practicing with my dogs you know yeah. i always say my, my larry baby my handsome boy i'm like no my baby you know mm-hmm. uh, hi y'all when i get home how y'all doing <laughs> you know just just as practice because it's mm-hmm. unlearning we mm-hmm. have yeah. to unlearn a lot of those things mm-hmm. yeah um First, we have to learn about it Mm because we grew up not learning anything, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) We need to learn about it properly. And we need to unlearn the language Mm -hmm. that is very damaging. Definitely. And it it just goes to show that when we are in a place where we have to learn about it, that stems from a place of privilege. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if if we're trying to learn like ourselves about Mm -hmm. gender, about trans rights, about human rights... In general, about I don't, black, and black I don't know, I don't know a lot, yeah. right? Like I'm still learning. No, I reached out learning. to someone, one of my friends, a few months ago because I started questioning, like, okay, like queer, and like I, like, am I queer or not? Like, if <laughs> I, I feel like I'm pretty, mm-hmm. you know, like. So I was talking yeah. to my friend Marina, and we were on Twitter about it. And she's like, I could send you literature, and she's very like validating about it. it was just like, I felt like I, I can't say mm-hmm. I'm queer, right? Like I, maybe I can't say that, or maybe because I'm with my part you don't want to overstep yeah Yeah. i don't Mm want to overstep into a community that imposter syndrome mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. like i'm not that enough well what how i see queer um is it's an umbrella term so Mm -hmm. you can be anywhere in the lgbtq community and be queer Mm -hmm. yeah that's the way i see it that's why when i thought of the name one thing queer i was like it's it's it's, it's, (laughs) thank you it was it was more credit credit i was always like (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Jenny's mega validating, and even when we had our call, like I don't know if I, that's the first line in the message I sent. Yeah. I don't know if I'm what you're looking for, oh, yeah. <laughs> like because I you see because it's like I might because it's it's also it stems from a lot of respect, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. I don't want I don't want to yeah sorry no I don't want to overstep wanna, exactly I don't want to <laughs> overstep and I don't want to enter space that is for mm-hmm. this space of people and it's not my space you know but and like I you mean, said privilege right mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. I acknowledge a lot of the privilege yeah. I have like mm-hmm. my I am Mexican but guess what people may not know I'm Mexican I don't speak Spanish mm-hmm. I was not taught Spanish mm-hmm. and my last, I'll just say my last name is white right mm-hmm. But that's not really my last name. I'm not going to, like, my... You're not going to go in. Yeah. yeah, but it was just, like, my real last name should be Perez. I'm, I'm freaking Mexican, I <laughs> <Yeah>. swear. <laughs> but I've always felt like, okay, like, no. I don't fit into this crew because I don't speak Spanish, mm-hmm. right? And I'm not, you know, not poor me, but it's, like, I've always had kind of, like, this identity mm-hmm. issue because it's, like, where do I fit in? Because yeah. I, don't, I don't fit into this clique because I didn't have the same struggles, right? Mm-hmm. My parents were very kind of... I was okay growing up. Mm-hmm. You know, after my dad passed away, it was just my mom, but she... She worked her ass off mm-hmm. for us not to really need anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do acknowledge the privilege I have, especially, you know, yeah, I am Mexican, but I am very white passing and I acknowledge that. Same. But I also did get a lot of shit for being Mexican and I mm-hmm. didn't even know I was Mexican yeah. at that age, you know, like, yeah. what? Like, yeah. what do you mean go across back? You know, little kids tell me in fourth grade, go back across the border. I'm like, what the fuck you mean? <laughs> You know, yeah. but like you know, a lot of those things growing up, you don't feel like you really fit into space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like I remember being like, what, like fourth, fifth grade, and having my hair cut really short and wanting to just look like a boy. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to like I would be lock myself in the bathroom and just spike my hair mm-hmm. and just like I had spiky you hair know, too. You know, like, <laughs> I totally oh. did. <laughs> and that's why when when you all were talking about the episode yesterday about um. In Disney movies, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> Miranda was fire. I had Jack Kelly. Like, <sighs> I started thinking back, I was like, what are all these movies that I probably was unconsciously just attracted to? All these like mm-hmm. females, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. And it was one of the main ones was G.I. Jane, yeah, Demi Moore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was obsessed with that freaking movie. For a minute, I was like, I'm enjoying the military. <laughs> we, we were we were thinking like, oh, I want to be them. Like I remember yes, my first, yes. my she first shaved crush. her head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> my first crush was Kimberly in um, Power Rangers, and I'm like, I want to be the Pink Ranger. Yes. But no, I wanted to be on top of the pink. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's what I meant. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cal's looks so I know. I'm dead because I'm laughing on. Because have you, you ever seen? Oh, I'll bring it up. For Broad City, there's a part where Alana tells um, this new manager that comes in, and she's her. like, I don't know if I want to be in you or be or be you. And I'm like, that's <laughs> hilarious. Like, I'm dead because I was also oh thinking of, have you ever seen Motocrossed? Yes. Okay. Oh, these so twin movies. My favorite. I painted my nails green like her. Stop <laughs> because it. I, she painted her nails green and i was like i so i thinking back to all these movies i was wondering if they were just intertwining these like low-key queer characters oh my yes. god because it's oh, like yeah. that like yeah. there was the other one that oh, what was it so many disney there's so many because i was like yeah she was totally mm-hmm. like, come on come on <laughs> you know what's you funny enough <laughs> now <laughs> you know what's funny i was just watching uh chrissy carlson's uh oh. video on youtube yes. and she spoke about cadet kelly and mm-hmm. it's so funny because like i mentioned it and i just watched it yesterday i was telling you i was, I was telling jesse about it on the way over here that um one of your friends I, i'm gonna get it wrong uh, somebody messaged uh, i think it was brenda Linkovich, yeah. Okay, okay. We, Sent it we to love us. love Brenda. Yes, I know she loves her shout outs. We love Brenda. We love Brenda. <laughs> yes, love her. She messaged me all the time and I'm like, oh, I love talking with She's people. She's the most supportive person. She's oh my love God. Her. awesome. She's my number one fan. She's like, <laughs> please make, like, meet Brad Pitt. Oh. <laughs> so that, that is my job in my career is to get well known enough to. I like, love her. Oh. That's great. But she had sent that video to the podcast messages and talked about um, at that point where she was saying that, could. Oh, uh, Chris Carlson was saying that if she were to ever play that role again, she would push mm-hmm. to present that more, that she was an LGBTQ character, yeah. because that's what she she recognizes, that so many people had their, like, sexual awakening with, with her character. I character. love it. Yeah, love I'm it. like, that's... It's amazing. It's amazing. It made know, me so happy. I know we mm-hmm. got off, but what do you feel that you kind of, like, with being bi and with a male? Like, what do you struggle with? I definitely have the imposter syndrome, the mm-hmm. same thing that, like am I queer enough? Because I'm very respectful of spaces. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to overstep my bounds, especially, I mean, I'll just say, especially as a white woman, I don't want to, like, I understand the need for people to have their spaces. And that doesn't always have to include me. <laughs> like, it's but not it my... But you're, you're bi. So yes. Like, what, what is this That's what... Now? But even so, like, because... That took a long time because I could already, I already have this thing where I have fights with, with people in my head before they're ever going to happen or they're never going to happen. So I could hear the conversations already happen. Like, well, why does it matter? Especially with my family. They're, it's not that we were ever growing up told, being told like gay is bad, but it was never talked about. It's not an like, option. It's, it's not, not an option. It's disgusting. not really an option. I have a lot of older brothers and they're, I'm the only girl. So I didn't really have any examples really of like different types of relationships Mm so to be it's just the norm this is what you're gonna follow to be the quote odd one out like i've always kind of be that because i am the only girl and like i don't know i just felt the conversations coming and it was those were invalidating but jenny's very validating and (laughs) i was like (laughs) like i it's it feels nice to be seen and it feels nice to really come into my own because there's all it's been there that's who i've been my whole life and once i really like i don't want to say accept but accepted it and came out with it i'm like oh i i am this like my partner is my partner and he's gonna be my partner and i don't see that ever changing so i don't know if i will ever have a relationship with the same sex partner and i never have really i mean i've experimented but like i don't know if i ever will but to me that doesn't make me any less me (laughs) no like and it's it's it's, you know how you feel yeah you know how you feel and that's what matters but it i that's why i don't you know it's important that we don't lose that just Mm -hmm. because we have a partner absolutely yeah but it goes both ways you know Mm -hmm. i want my partner to feel comfortable being whoever he Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. no matter what you know we you know if they have something that they are growing into in a few years, I want to be there to be like, you know, mm-hmm. I got your back, you yeah. know, and it should be that both ways. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the, I I feel exactly the same way that no one has my back more in this world than him yeah. and mm-hmm. like vice versa. Like mm-hmm. we are always e- each other's biggest cheerleaders and that's why people say like, what, why does it matter? I'm like, I was mentioning, I've mentioned before, like it matters because it's who I am and it matters because I've tried to hide oh, it yeah. and it matters because I didn't under, <laughs> I felt like an alien as a kid because I didn't understand that other people are thinking these things too and I didn't really have an outlet to discuss that and even discuss really with my parents about like, hey, I think these things, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Like, 
and not that they were ever domineering or or mean about it it just they were just didn't really have any experience and you kind of could already know like they're probably not going to have the most open mindset or conversation anyways, yes, they're, right? But they're, it's not their fault. You know, I agree, like, yeah. It's not, like, your parents or my mom, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, I don't God. put blame. Because it's, mm-hmm. like, you have to think, like, yeah, it sucks to have mm-hmm. gone through that when I was 16 with mm-hmm. my mom reacting. But what did my mom grow up with? She grew up mm-hmm. yeah. being a Jehovah's Witness mm-hmm. um, with um, an, a mom who only really spoke Spanish, who didn't mm-hmm. have any mm-hmm. um, education past middle school. You mm-hmm. know, it's, like, you need to, I need to remember that, but also like, then some, what, you know, what can I teach my mom? You know, I feel like I, the reason my mom has been so open-minded the past few years and grown is because I have been in her little year. Like, oh, mom, <laughs> yeah. Same. You're educating her. And yeah. yeah and that, way. you know, there's only so much we can do. Yeah. Um, but it's also like checking them. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. You know, that's not cool. Like, yeah. That people don't deserve to be talked to about like that you know mm-hmm. it was actually i think last week i brought it up to her because i don't talk to a lot of my siblings i think this year i've definitely been setting my boundaries and protecting my space a lot more um like i said as like you get to a point where like i'm, a, I'm an adult i don't need to i can say no to stuff now you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i told my mom i think last week because we were briefly talking about my brother and i didn't tell her i was coming on the podcast or anything whatever Mm -hmm. but i was like you know i'm still kind of upset you know like my brother doesn't really respect who i am as a person Mm -hmm. and i'm tired of demanding that respect i with whether it's the job that i do and it not being respected um or just who i am Mm -hmm. and i don't want it i don't want that anymore Mm -hmm. and i told her i was like you know like he outed me to you (laughs) she's like and it kind of confused me because she was like but what do you mean i was like when she when i was in high school and you know she's he said i had a girlfriend She's like, but you said that you did. And I was like, I lied to you. Of course. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I was like, she was my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I was like, but it wasn't his place to tell. And it caused a whole thing. And mm-hmm. we didn't get much into it last week. But I was like, I was kind of confused. I was like, man, I thought you knew. Come on, you know. Yeah. You know, but it's like, you have to, you get to a point where it's just like, I can only educate so much. And, you know, what, what I think it was a final straw. Because I tried talking to my brother again this past year. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, make an effort not to cut everyone off. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, yeah. he posted something like like it was a transphobic meme. And I was like, you know what? I can't do it. Mm-hmm. This is, this is, I have no understanding of people who post hateful things. Mm-hmm. It has nothing. If you are not that, yeah. what does it concern you? Yeah. It, I, nothing, I, it, has, it comes from hate. It yeah. comes, to, exactly. And you're just allowing more hate to be spread towards mm-hmm. a group that does not need anymore yeah you know definitely. so i was like no and in my mind i yeah i don't have kids and i don't plan on having if and when it's mm-hmm. not gonna happen for like years mm-hmm. but in my mind i tell that the way i rationalize is like i don't want my family or future family around that mm-hmm. yeah. at all like i'm not gonna tolerate transphobia homophobia mm-hmm. any of that language it's, I can't control the outside world, but mm-hmm. I can at least control the circle within Very myself nice. and my family. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So and that's what I, you know, I had to tell my mom, I was like, I'm protecting my space now, getting my space ready for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I am and not in a rush to, be, <laughs> to, to have kids. Yeah. You know, I'm still, I think I went from like, I'm going to have five kids. Like, you know, when I was younger, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to have a big family. And then a couple months ago, I was like, maybe we should just adopt, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's for yourself, too. Yeah, because like, it's like, it's it's very, it's ugly. Yeah. It's ugly. It is, and it's, it's, I would never want my children, if we have children, to repeat any no. of these things to other children. <laughs> because what did we, you know, I have to remember how I grew up. It's like, I grew up hearing these things. I grew up hearing yeah. hateful comments. And you kind of, you learn, you, when you're growing up, you pick up the things that you hear, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I may have had a lot of these thoughts growing up because I didn't know any other way. I didn't no. know any gay people. Mm-hmm. I actually, my dad's sister, mm-hmm. so my dad was a lot older than my mom. My dad's sister, we would go visit her in like, I don't know, like Porterville, I think. She, she's a lesbian. Yeah. I didn't know for the longest time. <laughs> they always just said her friend, Vernie, mm-hmm. she's lived with her forever. I was mm-hmm. like, I, I, I remember that when I found out it being like, Vernie is her partner. <laughs> she's like, you guys always 
was just sad. They had separate rooms. Mm-hmm. Like, no, that's, yeah. what do you mean? Jessie, yeah. she's a lesbian. She's been with her forever. That's the, that's the part that, <gasps> like, like what? yeah, that's the part that kind of kills me a little bit, too, is because my mom's sister is also gay. So, but, but, my and, mom's sister is gay. And, come and, on, y'all. My you mom's, have to do better. My mom's <laughs> brother is also a transgender male, See, man. I'm so, like, people. it's, it's, and they've been that way. Not that they've been that way, but, like, that has been what they are for more they, than half my life. So, so they were like, able to come out like with your family and like yes, but it was there was a lot of invalidating comments in that too. Okay, yeah. So I'm sure I saw that as a child and went, nope, I'm gonna shut my yeah, mouth about yeah. this. It wasn't like I said, like I I also I don't want to paint them as like huge villains, but like I just think they didn't they just didn't know that's they what didn't I mean. they didn't care to learn or know. Not that they didn't care, See, but that's like the difference between not knowing and then not learning, mm-hmm. right? There's things we did not grow up knowing, mm-hmm. but if you care, you yes. will learn. Yes, I had the same conversation with one of my brothers who I came out to with one of the, one of the ones I'm close with, and he w- we were talking about it, and he was like, "Well, I just didn't." He he was talking about his response to me coming out, and he's like, "I didn't know." I was like, "I know you didn't know. I'm not mad that you don't know. This has never been your world. You've never experienced." I said, "The problem comes is when you're educated and you don't change your exactly. behavior." Exactly. I said, "You learned something. My other brother taught you something, or our other brother taught you something, and you came back and apologized." To me, that's that's that's, that's, that's a little growth. That's, that's growth. Yeah, that's progress, and. I will continue our relationship because you've shown me you're willing to work and like like learn and you, you know I I'm very only interested in people who are willing to also put in the same effort put in the same effort yeah in all aspects of things it's 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 allowed a lot of people to fall out of my life and more people okay. to come in that's okay. and you, it's you been made room. it's yeah. it made room definitely and mm-hmm. and I hate to say it. I will take the new the newbies <laughs> at no, any point in this time. I think that's another thing. You know, part of unlearning is like you know what we also grew up learning, thinking that like family's family, mm-hmm. and no matter what, no matter how toxic or how bad they make me feel, yep. I have to put up with it because they're family. It's like mm-hmm. you know what? Mm-hmm. Again, Definitely. I'm an adult. I could say no. Definitely, and this is that. damaging my mental health. This is invalidating how I feel as a human. Mm-hmm. And this is invalidating my relationship that I value very yeah. much. And it's like, F you guys. Like, and I don't need that. I have a huge panic attack when I'm on my way to your house. Yeah, and lo- yeah. why am I putting my, like... My body is telling me something. Yeah, going, you know, my body yeah. is, like, going into protection mode Definitely. for a reason. Going it's, through therapy this year, it was like, my therapist was like, well, why do you even go to these things then? I'm like, <laughs> because it's family. And he's like, so? Like... Yeah, no. that doesn't if you're uh, physically ill on the way there you probably shouldn't go so i don't know i just unlearning but you, you even still have that thought in your head like but it's my family what am i supposed to do kind yeah. of thing and it's it, it's yeah. it's really our inner child that yeah. that reaction that we that we experience when we have those moments it's our inner child trauma mm-hmm. so we all have an inner child and we all as a, as children that's where we go through the most trauma and our inner child is like oh my gosh i'm scared because exactly. this is yeah. it brings you back to that moment mm-hmm. where you felt that fear mm-hmm. when and you were see a that's i feel like for so long that's where i just stayed mm-hmm. right i i feel like a lot of the anxiety that i had gone through the past couple of years was just going back to my child Jesse mm-hmm. not knowing mm-hmm. how to fully put my foot down mm-hmm. and be like you know what you know I think there was a period a couple of years ago where I was super depressed like mm-hmm. I was so depressed it has nothing to do with my relationship it was just I think when at a certain age you kind of go through a phase where it's like what the fuck am I doing mm-hmm. I was living in LA yeah. I don't like LA mm-hmm. um I gained like over 100 pounds mm-hmm. I and it's not you Same. know it, it you just deal with the there's People think of body dysmorphia as like, oh, I, I see myself bigger or whatever. It's like it works both ways. Like you, yeah. body dysmorphia, like you don't see yourself as you truly are in, at, in the lens until like, you see it from like, I didn't know how much weight like mm-hmm. I had gained until like I saw a picture mm-hmm. of myself and I was like, oh my God, like I see myself every day and, yeah. you know, I didn't see it as me like kind of, it was this form of self-harm because yeah. I was just so depressed. Um and when you are in that, you just don't, it's like a hole, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. You're just like, fuck, like, you, there's nothing. And I really feel like there was a couple of years that were kind of, like, blurry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's kind of meshed together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but because I wasn't able to set boundaries, and a lot of it, I think, is also, um, I, you know, now I am very pro-medication. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's oh. anything wrong with that. I have been on antidepressants, anxiety for, like... 
two years. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness. Um, I think that needs to be talked about more. That's never yeah. talked about amongst families. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm I'm already the weird one because I take meds. Right? Mm-hmm. You're taking care of yourself. Yeah, you're, but it's not look like that to some people. <laughs> yeah, but you know, take your medication, Jesse. It's like yeah. very just like this is why people don't talk about yeah. it. Yeah, y'all stigmatizing it. Yeah. yeah, but look at y'all repeating the same cycles over and over. Yeah, again. exactly. <laughs> yeah, your and, issues. and that's yeah. where it comes down to. It's like repairing. That's the thing. It's, it's, like, it's reparenting yourself. Mm-hmm. So when you're setting those boundaries with your family, with people that you've tolerated abuse from, mm-hmm. abuse. That's what abuse yeah. yes the, yeah. you've tolerated abuse from you have to you setting in the boundaries is basically you as a parent to your inner child mm-hmm. setting boundaries and saying this is not gonna <laughs> no. keep happening mm-hmm. because i'm protecting this little yeah. part of me mm-hmm. that has suffered and i'm not gonna allow you to keep hurting this that's exact. no child. that's exactly how i explained it to my mom mm-hmm. last week i was like little jesse couldn't say no mm-hmm. to the constant like verbal abuse I put up with, and the thing is, I was I am pretty forgiving, right? Mm-hmm. I I it helps. I smoke a lot of weed, <laughs> so I forget a lot of things. So mm-hmm. I'm like, why was I upset with this person? You know, it's okay. But it's like you get to a point after people just take advantage of that. It's like, you know what? No, yeah. Yeah. like this is who I am. This is how I feel about people. Mm-hmm. I make an effort to be better Mm -hmm. you know i'm not perfect but i am definitely a lot better than how i was a couple years ago and Mm -hmm. i'm more educated and it's if you care like we said if you care you will learn i had a friend year a couple years ago start transitioning right and they came out with their pronouns or he or uh, they them Mm -hmm. as an effort to remember i was like okay what can i do so because my i have the tendency when i'm texting to be like you know kind of more Mm -hmm. like maybe femme um like language language mm-hmm. so i made sure like when i changed their name in my phone i made sure to put the pronouns next mm-hmm. to their name mm-hmm. to know like okay when i'm texting them i'm yeah. not gonna you know it's just little things and, I'm, and you know if it if i slip up i'll be like oh my god you know like, yeah. don't address it just like you know mm-hmm. make them comfortable because it's those little things that i'm like okay i'm very forgetful so let me make this effort to just Mm-hmm. And those little reminder. those things too. When you realize how much you're willing to make that effort, that's the thing that hurts when somebody else is not willing to make that you effort. You know it's possible. And you know it's possible, <laughs> and you know how much you care about that person to make that. So it's kind of like, well, you don't care enough about you don't care enough about me to make yeah. the effort that I and I care about this person. That's the effort I'm making for yeah. them. Mm-hmm. That's the like heartbreaking thing about it is that like you don't care enough to. So if you don't care enough, why am I even going to deal yeah. with you? Like, and there's no excuse at this. Yeah. this stage we have literally so much access to information mm-hmm. um and to learn that, right yeah that and i don't think anyone i think what people get bogged down in is like i have to be perfect when i say stuff i mean no. we all still mess up the mm-hmm. point is you apologize or you say thank you and you move on and you correct it mm-hmm. and you keep correcting yourself oh, yeah. it, you know it, we're not all perfect at it like yeah. it's the effort i think for, I, effort. i'll speak for myself the effort for me is what is most you know what but counts. It, yes what counts and at a certain point if you keep making the same silly mistake then you're you, you're just like no. you gotta you gotta actually really try mm-hmm. <laughs> like you're not just gonna keep making the mistake and like it's gonna be okay like there's you know people make mistakes but like it's if you that's your way of not uh, not I don't want to say conforming. That, if that's not your way of like learning and re uh, learning how you think, I guess, or re um, I don't even know how to say. It. It's okay. It's like reprogramming. <laughs> there you go. Right? The there language. you go. If you're like y- you can't purposely keep make, m- making mistakes and think that's okay. Yeah. No. Honest mistakes are fine, and everybody knows your intentions by how mm-hmm. you know each other and I how mean, you react to yes. when you make. Those oh, if you're like, oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. You need, like I, there's um like one friend that I. That who I know, like she'll she'll always correct me, mm-hmm. and I'm totally I'm like, thank you, yeah, like thank oh, you yeah. for correcting me. Like mm-hmm. I'm not. There's some things I'm like, you know, come on, yeah. come on. But like, there's some things I'm like, I, if I need correcting, correct me, because mm-hmm. I know I don't know everything, no. and I don't claim to know everything. Mm-hmm. I'm just my space is like I just know I'm very outspoken, mm-hmm. and I. I, I told you both earlier, I was like, I get kind of self-conscious about mm-hmm. some of the things I'm outspoken about because I know I have no filter and I know it pisses a good amount of people off or mm-hmm. can make people uncomfortable, but it's also like, you know what? It's if like, we want things to improve, mm-hmm. we have to have these conversations. There's a greater purpose. Yeah, yeah, because even just, okay, I'm bi, you know what? And I take privilege that I'm able to say that because I 
am a woman Mm -hmm. and i could say that with no issue Mm -hmm. right um and going out i don't know if you feel this going out you still have like a hetero privilege of like no one's gonna know unless i tell you yeah you, you, yeah. you know you don't get the weird looks that like say me mm-hmm. and Bella yeah would get. no yeah mm-hmm. like no and i already know what that's like because like tyler and i went years like anytime we would go out we'd always be holding hands because we don't want attention from other people or bothering us we always were just together and like we're just so comfortable mm-hmm. yeah like she's my chosen sister mm-hmm. and i i even asked her i was like tyler when did i come out to you like how did you know <laughs> she's like i think you never did. You know? <laughs> it was just a given. Yeah, you, you introduced me to your girlfriend. And that was it. I was like, really? I was like, because I was just trying I to think, that. like, that how do great. I? You kind of, I don't know. It's just, it's all, it's all learning, and mm-hmm. it's definitely, like I said, we have to identify the privilege that we have mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. use that. Like I, like we, I'm bi, mm-hmm. and I can say that, mm-hmm. but can bi men say that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably not as easily, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah, and I and I think back to how did I think ten years ago? I probably contributed to that bi phobia towards mm-hmm. men, mm-hmm. Um, thinking like, oh no, guys can't be bi. You know, you are either gay or straight, mm-hmm. and if you do, then you know. And, and that's that that's was, very that's. So the whole, the whole stigma around bisexuality is like, we're in, in society, it's so ingrained in us that like everyone ultimately just wants to be with a man. So like, say you Mm -hmm. identify as a bisexual woman or AFAB and you're bisexual and you uh, are with, you come out and they automatically say, oh, you're just bi-curious or you want attention mm-hmm. from men, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is like the whole stigma around bisexual. Mm-hmm. That's one of and the many That's why bisexuality stigma. is okay as a w- girl in high school. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, chicks are oh, making cool. out. That's mm-hmm. cool. Let's add, mm-hmm. you know, this and that. And exactly. then when it comes down to men, when they no. identify as bisexual, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, he's gay. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't like girls. Mm-hmm. He's just saying bi so for security reasons yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no. No, I fully, fully... <laughs> as a gay woman, as a lesbian, I'm like, I don't know, for me, like, I put a man and a woman next to each other, and obviously I'm gay, so I'm like, wouldn't everyone just want to choose the woman? <laughs> like, in my brain, that's how it works, yeah. because I'm so gay, but <laughs> but I don't know, that's, it's just society. That's how but, it was in, like, high school, it's hard, because it's, like, it, not hard, but, like, like... Getting that a lot is like, well, I don't want to be a spectacle for guys. Like, that's, I don't want to be that. But, like, that was what was hard growing up. Because no one explained that you could like both or like multiple different gender genders. And as a kid, I'm like, but I also like guys. Like, I also find this guy attractive. So, what mm-hmm. does that mean? Like, See, I, I want to, I, I want to do the same things. It means you're bi. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a, yeah, as a kid, I didn't know that. No, I get I it now. But, like, yeah. I'm like, but no one. Like, okay, thinking back to high school, we probably knew more. Definitely. Can you think of a like a bi guy? Mm, In high school, no. that was, yeah. Mm-mm. But how many girls? So many. Yeah, but that's what I mean. It's like how many. Because you know they're there, mm-hmm. they just mm-hmm. don't feel comfortable mm-hmm. because it's so much more acceptable for us mm-hmm. to just say it. And that's my hope, at least in all this, is like, you know what, like, I acknowledge my contribution to like, maybe not, but that's part of it, it's growth, right? Mm-hmm. I may not have had that mindset 10 years ago, but yeah. you know what, that was my inner homophobia, biophobia, mm-hmm. growing up, not knowing anything else, mm-hmm. and... And that's from society. Yeah. yeah. That's that's a yeah. lot of when you ask me, like, how I feel. The biophobia is still stuck in my head. Or, like, mm-hmm. even even the homophobic thoughts, are like, oh, no. Like, because there's still some days where I'm like, am I that? I'm like, who are you talking to? Yes. 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 You are. Get, like, I have to, like, literally sit for a second and go, get out of my head. Like, wh- these thoughts are not even my own thoughts. I think mm-hmm. they could just only yeah. sometimes... <sighs> Maybe we just didn't see it. We couldn't imagine a life like that, Mm -hmm. though, right? Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have these conversations. So, Mm -hmm. like, even when I was with that partner in high school, it's, like, it was kind of hard to picture a future Mm -hmm. because it was kind of, like, is this unrealistic? Because Mm -hmm. I've never allowed myself to picture this type of future. It's always just been... um, What society? Yeah, what society feels. Or what would we, you know how can we it was just never a thought mm-hmm. you what know? was like, represented in in like movies and mm-hmm. books yeah and all that's that. why like when you all were talking <laughs> yesterday about like different characters it's like we should have had that and yeah. i hoped at least for our future generation that mm-hmm. they for sure will have that oh yeah you know because we're having these conversations and i yeah. i just think it's so important i think it's Definitely. so important to have open conversations i try to 
educate some coworkers. You know, sometimes they may not might not be, despite where I work, you know, we have trainings on gender. Um, I have patients who are transgender mm-hmm. and I already know the anxiety that they must feel accessing care. Um, so I try to make everything as smooth as possible, yeah, that's you know, amazing. for every patient, but especially, especially for my patients who come in who are transgender. Mm-hmm. Um, I try, I know the anxiety that they must feel. Mm-hmm. Um, I had, maybe it's a patient coming in who is a uh, transition female to male and they're coming to get an IUD and you, if someone calls you in, you are very male presenting, they're going to be confused as to why I'm ordering a pregnancy test for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I shouldn't have to explain it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, this is your patient. Um, what I usually do at my work is uh, off, off the front, since I'm usually like front desk, I'll, and I know that they're transgender because I, I know. Mm-hmm. I, you know, not that I know. It's like, okay, I see your ID doesn't match your insurance and you, um, the gender hasn't changed. So I usually just be like, hey, listen, I call them in and I ask, okay, what is your, per- what's your preferred name? Mm-hmm. So I know. Um, and I said, listen, um, because it doesn't match, we have to go, like your insurance, we have to go by your um, name that's on your insurance, mm-hmm. but I will ensure that we call you mm-hmm. by your chosen name. Mm-hmm. Um, at least, and then I just get, oh, no, and then, so as long as I let them know, I, like, I just don't want you to see your labels and your name and mm-hmm. think that we're not properly identifying you, but mm-hmm. until, but I'm like, you know, once you get your name changed, though, bring it in and then we'll change it for you. It's not yeah. going to be an issue. Um, just that little thing, yeah. I love doing because i know if, if may, maybe it wasn't another coworker that could be already a whole different experience mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's just that anxiety made it a little bit easier and mm-hmm. i make sure whoever pulls the chart hey look at their preferred name and then i'm like That's their amazing. preferred name mm-hmm. yeah. and they're like okay <laughs> yeah. got it yeah for you know they're coming in for an iud so they're gonna need this and mm-hmm. i just just like that and they're like got it mm-hmm. okay that's yeah. amazing yeah well just, you're, you're, you're just little things yeah. you know because it's like it feels little to you, but it's not little. No. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's it's not little, and I'm sure everyone appreciates that. Yeah. And, like, I mean, it's it's, it's, it's really, like, the least... No, like, not belittling no. it, but it's really the least we could do. No, like, it's, it's truly because, especially, like, this is my first time back at college, right? Mm-hmm. Since graduating high school, I think I've avoided it for so long. I'm taking, like, an intro to, like, LGBTQ studies. Like, I want to make this fun mm-hmm. and interesting, and I want to learn. And... The process for transgender people accessing care is just like, there's obstacle after obstacle, whether they're mm-hmm. paying out of pocket, whether insurance doesn't cover things. And then you have to worry about shit. Like, is this place that I'm going to go into, are they going to yeah. uh, give me the proper care? Mm-hmm. You know, and for some, you know, and, you know, I love my job, but there are some coworkers who are a little bit older who, despite the trainings, may not fully understand. And it's like, I don't get mad. I'm like, hey. This is what it is. Mm-hmm. This is part this of is, our- this is what, and it's not like they they're hateful at all. It's just they don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. my right? thing is they always want to find out why, or like they want to know, mm-hmm. and it's it, why it can't just be this person is who this person is, and that's it. Yeah. You don't need to know any backstory or why this or why that. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are it's- here. To, I'm here to validate <laughs> yes. how you feel, and for you to leave with whatever, whatever, because you're already coming in. You're coming in either to get tested or you're coming in for something mm-hmm. that needs to be resolved. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to add on to those issues. Yeah, I want exactly. you to leave like any other person coming in accessing care. Easy breezy. Adios. Mm-hmm. That's what it has you to know? be. Yeah. yeah and it's how it should than, be. Yeah. Because it's like, shit, like, are they, they're going to ask me, like, why am I getting a pregnancy mm-hmm. test? You know, why am what, you know, what medications I'm yeah. taking or mm-hmm. it's like, no, like. Yeah. It sh- it because needs- I am. That's why. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what it fucking is. <laughs> you know? That's why. But, but, you know, I am grateful that I think a lot of it is my job. And, you know, mm-hmm. we have our gender training. So I'm always like, and I love, I love. And they always geek out at me. Like, just because I always bring up my notebook. I'm like, oh, it's training time, guys. You know, let's go. I love, I that. love that you love your job. Yes. I do. I love that, too. I, you know, nonprofit work, nonprofit work. But it's like, I've been there for five years. And it is fast and it's busy. But I love it. Yeah. No. I love it. That's amazing. It's 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 important. Yeah. It's important work. Yeah. Like absolutely. And I, I came out to my coworkers and even that was like a word like because they saw females, right? Mm-hmm. And they're all like married and they have kids. <laughs> I was like, oh I don't want because it's always a struggle too, is like they're gonna think I am any I don't want them to ever think I'm hitting on them. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. the mm-hmm. thing, is like, nah y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Not y'all. <laughs> no, no, no. 
but it's like they know I'm bi. So yeah. that that was comforting. Like, yeah. and, and they even they're like, so how does you know you, you have that, your partner? Yeah, like, I yeah, always get that too. I'm bi. Yeah, I like both. That's awesome. Yeah, I always get that too. And I'm like, he's fine. Yeah, <laughs> like, like he still loves me. I mean, we're still a team. Like mm-hmm. it didn't it doesn't change. It doesn't really change. It it like I was telling him like because we we joke like. A held joke about like oh like evolved Kelsey this year like <laughs> and I'm like it's not evolved it's just that this is how it's always been on the inside mm-hmm. but I'm just happier about it and yeah. more comfortable to show it all it's beautiful. out now like even, even your journey like when you were coming out Jenny <laughs> I think I was texting I was like she's out <laughs> and I was I was so I was so total cheese mosa because I was like oh. <laughs> You commented. I think you commented on my my I'm gay post. <laughs> Did you? Have, I, I think it because I was like because I, I I went through the whole thing with you. All right, mm. I was like, oh, I was like, wasn't she just went that that's in person? Mm. I was like, I'm gonna be she's most. I was like, ooh, 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 not no more. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, oh, she's gay. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I was so happy. Thank we were so you. happy because I was like. People are like finding themselves, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's like, quarantine, dude. Like dude. quarantine made you <gasps> self reflect like a oh. motherfucker. Like it's crazy. Quarantine changed but, like, you're glowing. everything. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Glowing, glowing, mm-hmm. glowing. Yeah. Thank you. And they're gorgeous together. So, <laughs> Thank like, you. yeah, quarantine for sure. Like, <laughs> rocked my world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In all in all aspects, mm-hmm. it's it's. I hate to say it because I know so many awful things happened during it, and it was awful time for a lot of people. Definitely. But like. It really improved our relationship yeah. and our way of communicating yeah. and like, you know, and just me and myself, there was a lot of reflecting. There was a lot of learning. There was a lot of, I don't know, <laughs> TikTok also. Like, TikTok. That's, TikTok. That's, I, that's, I held off as long as I could, but it seems that's <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a rabbit hole. It yeah. is so <laughs> Or black hole. Rabbit yeah. hole? Both. It's a rabbit okay. <laughs> But see, I think that's interesting because I feel like either I hear people struggled in their relationships during quarantine mm-hmm. or they like thrived we were we were good before but yeah. like the amount of communication that because that's all we're about him and I are air communication first always okay. and that's really made us both under obviously understand each other better and stronger because it's it's no more of like oh is this person it's no more games neither of us don't like games so mm-hmm. it, it the communication is like it just allowed us to we were at home a lot like you know it was like well what are you thinking what are you thinking and and then it started to be like i saw this tiktok i feel this way Mm -hmm. and like it's even though we kind of joke about tiktok but it's the same thing about we were talking about like representation matters like even if it's a silly person on tiktok it's still representation you start to feel more comfortable because you feel like hey this person thinks again you feel less like an alien this person Mm -hmm. thinks like i feel and i agree and you know it's it's I'll say it again. Representation matters. Mm-hmm. It it does. You you don't know. Uh, yeah, you don't know the impact that you're having. Like, yeah, I think I'm just being Jesse, and I'm just posting shit and being outspoken <laughs> and just you know. But I don't. I don't know that Jenny's looking at it like, oh shit, you know, she's mm-hmm. buying. You know, like I don't. I don't look at it ever as like I'm making an impact. Mm-hmm. It's just you like, definitely are. <sighs> yeah, hundred percent. You. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But it's just like I just I. It means a lot. It really does because I question it a lot that i'm just being annoying <laughs> and it's just my inner um you know self-conscious yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i and i understand i am very outspoken to the point that it can be a lot for people i just haven't known i think i've always been this way i'm mm-hmm. just getting more clearer about mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. um and more focused on what i'm trying to do yeah, right yeah. you know and it's just if I'm a bad person because I want all pe- all peoples to be accepting and loving and not have, you know, I have a lot of things that people might not agree with me on and how I feel about, I feel like I have a lot of religious trauma that causes me to just mm-hmm. cringe mm-hmm. at a lot of religions, <laughs> you know, like I literally just like cringe, mm-hmm. um, you know, but I have reasons for that. You yeah. know, there's things that have happened to me growing up that caused me to feel this way and you know, if you don't agree with me, that's fine. But at the end of the day, what do, what are my goals? I want people to be loved for themselves. Mm-hmm. I want people to not feel that they have to hide. Like, that's what breaks my heart is if people go years and years not being... Like, this life is so so fucking short, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Like, so that is what breaks my heart is for hearing stories of people coming out in their 50s mm-hmm. and 60s. That, break, that, that absolutely yeah. breaks my heart that you had to go your life not living your truth Mm -hmm. and it's like what could your life have been what could your life have been and that applies to everyone you know like 
I would hate hate for my partner to go his whole life and be like, hey, you know, maybe, you know, I didn't feel as strongly for you or vice versa. You know, like I would mm-hmm. want that to be. I'm so loving of them that I want them to just be like the yeah. happiest they could be. Mm-hmm. You know, and th- I know in themselves, that's the biggest thing. People just need to be themselves mm-hmm. without fear without fear Mm -hmm. yeah you know like i was really this last week i followed this um person who was transgender they transitioned back and i kind of followed their journey um they got attacked at like a bar last week in florida with their partner and i was just like one one clip of their story they're having fun and you know taking shots Oh, look you know he's he's having a good time mm-hmm. and then like the next was like they one of them has a black eye and mm-hmm. they were attacked at a bar and it's like oh. for fucking what you know yeah. y'all were having fun okay. dancing drinking there's just hateful people but the, these conversations i hope will help educate people mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. people are like what does this mean let me look into it more yeah you know let me question my inner my inner prejudice that i hold mm-hmm. you know because it's like that's just hate that's yeah just exactly hate. Mm-hmm. And then, there's no there's literally no use for hate no. yeah absolutely none mm-hmm. so. there's so much good that we could be doing mm-hmm. exactly to improve ourselves and people around us whether mm-hmm. it's you know if you there's only you could either educate your family if they don't want to be receptive mm-hmm. then stand your ground mm-hmm. and adios yeah Adios. Yeah. Adios. Yeah. yeah. Well, I went on for a while. No, you're, you're, you're good. good. No, you're, you're, great. Great. you're great. I loved our conversation, yeah. Kels. It's, I, it's, I don't even. <laughs> it's just a terrible idea to not have words on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's something that I was, you all wanted to talk to, touch on, or I touched everything. No, <laughs> I think I think that we touched for today. I, I think, think so. we, but we'd love to have you on again yeah, in the future if you'd be up for it. And um, of course, and I, I, I I listened to y'all and it was like Tuesdays. Like, oh, podcast day. It means the world. <laughs> it does. It really it does. does. And you're an artist, so I wanted, Yay. I wanted. Me and Kels talked about um, allowing you to tell us like yeah. about all your ventures oh, yeah. and plug your what art. You see, plug so. what you need to plug. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. What's, I'm trying to move away from saying like I'm a resin artist because I feel like I just think to my ADHD like I dabble into like everything Mm -hmm. um I'm just a crafty person but mainly like you know I do resin art um cook I I love cooking I I made them chili chili it was amazing it was so good that's like my love what part of my love I love cooking for people Mm -hmm, like I love like let me feed you Mm -hmm. please because you will fall in love with me (laughs) I think we did (laughs) yeah yeah no it was no I you know and um my I make sweaters you know my partner he loves Twin Peaks so his exchange was like i'll get you a heat press as long as you can make me all the twin peaks <laughs> oh. shirts i want so i do that um i'm just pretty crazy. i just got a stained glass kit so i'm down oh, yeah that's amazing yeah. that's awesome no it's super fun but that's it, it was more time consuming than i thought but you know i'm a crafty person i i found that in quarantine um because i didn't stop working in healthcare and i just like i need to do something mm-hmm. yeah um Being impressed I, yeah <laughs> so i would just come home and i'm a advocate huge weed smoker i think <laughs> cannabis is medicine medicine and it should be totally legalized everywhere mm-hmm. and i'm not ashamed of it yes. um i smoke all the time but I yeah it. It's, it helps me deal with my anxiety and i needed one thing was like my psychiatrist was like what do you do for you one day and i was like mm-hmm. i started crying so I was like i don't do shit yeah for me you know i do i work and i do this and I don't do anything to decompress. Mm-hmm. So I have found myself being being able to have little Jesse come out more because mm-hmm. I've always been very creative, mm-hmm. but I haven't had the tools to express it. So I'm like, I'm grown. I could buy this stuff <laughs> now. Yeah. You know, I could express myself in different ways. Oh my mm-hmm. God. So, you know, I'm grateful for that. And my partner, his, I, his love language is he likes to spoil me mm-hmm. like that's his way of like i may, he may, may not be the most romantic person but he's like whatever you want i will get you <laughs> tell me what you need yeah you know so it's like that's nice i've yeah. never been spoiled like that it's not yeah. about material things mm-hmm. but it's like that's his way no, that's the meaning you know, behind it's it. a meaning so you know mm-hmm. yeah i'm an artist and i you know if i have a lot of people reach out to me either with art questions or even sex questions if you have abortion questions I have friends. It, it makes me feel really happy because I do have friends who just randomly message me sometimes with like those questions. That's I'm amazing. like, really, I haven't talked to you in so long, but you're asking me about this abortion, mm-hmm. and I love that. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I will help you with whatever you need. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I'm here. Where can forever. they find you on Instagram? I am at Lady underscore of the Soul S O L Lady of the Soul. 
Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And you can find me at Jenny Lynn Bouton on Instagram. And mine is, I always forget it. Specs well, Specs Specs. <laughs> I think it's I memorized mine. how you guys say it too. Yeah, yeah, I always forget it. Okay, but yes, yeah, Specs Right X on Instagram. And our <laughs> podcast Instagram is One Thing Queer. We're also on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, we are at One Thing Queer Podcast mm-hmm. on there. Neek. So go follow us on there. And leave them an Apple review, y'all. Yeah, oh, five thanks. stars. Five stars. <laughs> five stars. Please. Uh, and you can also email us at one thing queer at gmail.com. Yeah. So I love you. Uh, oh, thank you so much. I love you too. Jesse, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And we truly really loved your story. And <laughs> we just hope that you got to say everything you felt like it's you a good little therapy say. session that's good <laughs> y'all could be gay it's okay okay <laughs> y'all could be oh my gosh that is, is that it that's yeah. gonna be uh your caption <laughs> yeah. for the instagram post. i love it i love I like it. it okay so so i guess that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode of one thing queer and we will see you back again next week you bye, bye. 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 <laughs> Graphics by BexUniverse.co Music by Jacody.